All right, here we go. We're going to try this out real quick. Uh, got a compressor we're going to check for grounded uh, or a shorter ground, as, as uh, you'll hear out in the field. <clears throat> I've got my own personal views about what a short is, but uh, a lot of technicians, they'll say that a, a unit is shorted to, uh, or a compressor is shorted to ground. So here's how you check that. Uh, you can see here we got the plug from Copeland that's plugged into the scroll compressor. Um, the way this used to be um, was individual wires, but you can see here that they actually have this molded plug and this makes it kind of dummy proof. But um, you can use the wires and check from the contactor, but the way that I like to check and verify is by taking my meter and setting it on continuity. And uh, we're going to touch one of these terminals uh, with one lead and then we're going to use the other lead and touch it to ground. So a uh, quick check of continuity on my meter and you can see we got a beat. So I'm going to plug in right here into one of these terminals and then I'm going to touch the copper pipe. And it didn't beep. If it were to beep, then that would indicate that the windings inside this compressor shell um, is grounded or shorted to ground and this motor is more than likely going to trip the breaker and uh, that's why you're going to get called out uh, to diagnose why they're not uh, heating or cooling properly. So we'll check each terminal of the ground. And we should not get a beep. Another thing you can do real quick while, you're, uh, while you've got the compressor uh, exposed like this is you can do a, uh, an ohm check of individual windings. There's two windings inside our single phase PSC motor. There's a run winding and a start winding. Uh, there's three terminals, run, start, and common. Uh, the common is, of course, where the run and the start windings will meet at one, at one point and then, you know, return back to the other side of power. So we can take and we can ohm out these individual windings, right? I believe this is going to be run to common. And you can see here I've got uh, 1.7 ohms. I'm going to write that 1.7 down. Let's see, so I got three terminals. That's 1.7 ohms. And uh, I'm going to do this other one. This is going to be from there to there. It's going to be 1.4 ohms. And now I'm going to go back to these two, which should be the highest number going to be 2.9 ohms. Alright, All right, here's what I did. I took and uh, on a scrap piece of paper I drew the three terminals as I saw them on the compressor itself. Okay? Now, when I do a check between this top and this one, I'll write the number over here to that side. When I do the check between the top and this left side as we're looking at it, I put that number uh, as on that side. And then when I do the bottom two checks, or the bottom uh, terminals, I put that number down here, okay? Now, what I, this is the way that I do it, so when I, when I place these numbers here, the highest number points to the common terminal, okay? So I know that that top terminal is my common terminal. The lowest resistance is going to be the run to common winding, and the medium resistance is gonna be the start to common winding, okay? So by doing this, um, by doing that, I can basically figure out the orientation of my compressor windings. It helps that the molded plugs that they use with the compressors now takes that guesswork out. But if you ever come across an older compressor that is individually wired, it has its own terminal, its own wire, it's not in a plug. Uh, we used to have a problem that one of the wires would burn off uh, from, the, from the terminal and 
you know, the compressor wouldn't get full power. So if you ever had to come, come across a unit with that, you can diagnose the compressor, check it for ground, check the windings for continuity or for its resistance value, and you can figure out how that compressor needs to be properly wired back up. So hopefully it helps.